our liquid connective tissue, which will connect the different different uh, organs and, and tissues. That's fine. Um, in this, we have we dealt with uh, with the plasma, plus glands, and serum. Also in the blood cells. The blood cells there are different types. Their origin, how they they've been synthesized, because that the discipline of of these uh, origin and the types of blood cells that will give you like a hematology, a, a different discipline, hematology, okay, wherein you get all the uh, abnormal conditions like um, it's getting into, you know, leukemia and, uh, and, uh, and different types of blood cancers. So they always go in a, in a clinical side, hematology, oncology, those are dealing with the blood cancers in different types. So we should know what is the origin of the blood cells. Okay, so that's we are going now. It's coming from hemocytoblast. Hemocytoblast. Okay, hemocytoblast is the original cells which is being produced in the, you know, at the at the time of uh, uh, regeneration are the new cells from. Um, from from the bone marrow cells, hemocytoplast, and this is the cell, is the parent cell, and it will give rise to. There are five components: one, two, three, four, five. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. There are five different. Another cell it will come up. It will modify the hemocytoplast is modified into number one. Call it as the Megakaryoplast. I write it here. Mega karyoblast. Okay, number one. And then number two, proerythroblast. This is number one. Number two, proerythroblast. Number three, Myeloblast. Myeloblast. Okay. And then number four, monoblast. Monoblast. Number five, lymphoblast. Lymphoblast. So you can uh, you can put this one hemocytoblast is the is being um, you know modified uh, one type of cell is megakaryoplast another type they will modify it into proerythroblast another one myeloblast another one monoblast and another one lymphoblast so the all five different types of cells the origin is the one cell that is hemocytoblast Okay, that's for derived from the mesoderm and, 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 and from this bone marrow, and that's the lineage of blood cells, the starting point. Okay, now I'm going to give you one by one, I'm going to give what all the cells which is derived from here, and then I will write what all the cells from this, and then number three, what are the cells coming from there, and th what are the cells coming from here, and what are the cells coming from number five, or lymphoblast. So let us take megakaryoblast number one. Number one, mega karyoblast. Okay. From this, there is our one cell which is coming up. That is the pro mega karyocyte. Pro mega karyocyte, which is coming from. And from this, mega karyocytes. Mega karyocyte. It's one word. I'm writing with with, uh, with some space so that you can easily understand what my handwriting. But it's all of them are one word. Okay, pro mega mega karyocyte, mega karyocyte, and mega karyocyte will give rise to platelets. 
What is platelet will do? Our platelets are thrombocyte. Thrombocyte. Okay. So, in the blood, if you find platelets, what is the origin of platelets? Immediate ancestors of the cells is megakaryocytes, and their ancestor is pro megakaryocyte, and their ancestor is megakaryoblast, and their ancestor of megakaryocyte karyoblast is hemocytoblast. So, so this is the lineage okay, of number one mega karyoblast and then the final offspring the, the, the latest one is the platelets that's the functional one which it, uh, helps for thrombin synthesis as well as for fibrin as well as it, it helps in the blood clotting factor. Okay now we will go on to the number two pro erythroblast number two pro erythroblast as the name will indicate erythroblast so this one will will give rise to erythrocyte in a different stages so immediately the pro erythroblast will give rise to basophilic erythroblast basophilic erythroblast okay erythroblast and this basophilic erythroblast will give rise to polychromatophilic 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 erythroblast erythroblast okay and then it will produce normal blast N O R M O normal blast and then it will give rise to reticulocyte reticulocyte and this reticulocyte now this is the final product is RBC or erythrocyte so number two that is from hemocytoblast will give rise to pro erythroblast cell and then this is modified after you know more into basophilic erythroblast and then that will lead to synthesis or uh, changes the cells to polychromatophilic erythroblast and polychromatophilic erythroblast to normoblast and normoblast to a reticulocyte and reticulocyte to RBC. So up to this stage you know you get the nucleus for the erythrocytes or the uh, RBC they produce nucleus. But it will come to the uh, reticulocytes and the, the normal blast to reticulocytes and uh, the nucleus is being condensed because the RBC's main function here is to produce what? Hemoglobin, that protein. So once the hemoglobin protein has been synthesized up to this level and then there is no need for the ne uh, nucleus. So the nucleus is being eliminated that is being coming out or and, and, and then the only the cytoplasm of the cell that's why the RBC they don't have the nucleus because there is no need for a cell division for RBC it's been done up to this point. So the hemoglobin is the one which is the functional horse the working horse so once that horse has been produced and then nucleus leaves and then you have RBC. So if you have the nucleus in the RBC, that is an abnormal situation. You should not get it. And also the number of RBC in a, you know, in a, in a, in a blood that we discussed uh, last class as well. Okay. So number three, uh, got myeloblast. Myelo, M-Y-E-L-O-B-A-S-T. Myeloblast, B-L-A-S-T, B-L-A-S-T myeloblast it will give rise to a b and c there are three components okay pro myelo site this will give rise to i'll write it here pro myelo myelo site so myeloblast will give rise to promyelocyte and this promyelocyte will have 
A, B, C. Okay, that meaning it will give rise to three components: the promyelocyte, A, neutrophilic myelocyte, neutrophilic myelocyte, and then another one is the eosinophilic, E O S I N, eosinophilic. E O S I N O P H I L I C. Eosinophilic myelocyte. And then the basophilic. Basophilic. Basophilic, eosinophilic, and neutrophilic. What? This uh, promyelocyte is being modified into there are three categories of cells. The promyelocyte will give rise to three categories of cells. So now I will go on to the A neutrophilic, okay? A neutrophilic, neutrophilic. This neutrophilic myelocyte. This neutrophilic myelocyte. One one word, myelocyte. This name is neutrophilic myelocyte. A. It will it will produce, you know. Neutrophilic metamyelocyte. Neutrophilic metamyelocyte. Myelocyte. Neutrophilic metamyelocyte. And then it will produce neutrophilic band. They call it neutrophilic band. Neutrophilic band. And then the neutrophilic band will produce neutrophil. This is the final stage. This is the final product, okay? Which is uh, is going to be neutrophil polymorpho neutrophil, uh, you know, nucleosides. And those things will will uh, will help you to combat with the uh, like a phagocytosis or engulfing the, into the bacterial or viral or any other pathogen or antigen. It will. So it, it like a white blood cells. These are white blood cells which is coming up. Okay. The next one, the same way, A. Another one is the B. What is B? B is eosinophilic myelocyte. Eosinophilic myelocyte. Eosinophilic myelocyte that will produce eosinophilic meta. The same thing. What you have done before. The same thing. Eosino. Philic metamyelocyte. Metamyelocyte. And then it will produce as a eosinophilic band. Eosinophilic band. And the eosinophilic band will produce eosinophil. Eosinophil. So this is the origin of this is the final product and this is the eosinophilic band and, and then eosinophil being produced at the end. The same way number C is the basophilic myelocyte. C. Basophilic myelocyte. The same way you can you you, you, you can tell me basophilic myelocyte will produce basophilic basophilic meta myelocyte then it will give rise to a basophilic band basophilic band basophilic band will produce eventually basophil see what is this basophil neutrophil eosinophil they are white cells white blood cells okay so these their origin is promyelocytes all for the for all these three is the pro myelocytes and myeloblast. So if you have any deformities or I'll put it in that way, what is the final products? We have seen now neutrophil and basophil, right? And then another one is the eosinophil. So the origin of are the ancestors of this neutrophil, basophil, eosinophil, and the when you go back, and you will finally end up in one particular origin, 
we call it myeloblast, right? Myeloblast. So, in this lineage, if anything happens, there are certain numbers we expect in the bloodstream. We need to know how much percentage of neutrophil, how much percentage of basophil, how much percentage of eosinophil. Also, we used to know about the, uh, in the previous case, is the metamylocytes and basophil myelocytes and basophilic band, especially the basophilic <coughs> metamylocytes should be, should be minimum. We should not have maximum because it should give rise to neutrophil, basophil, uh, eosinophil on respective uh, cell, final cell. In case, if this particular uh, cells will be more or the mitotic division of this will be more and, and, and then what will happen that will lead to myeloma. And if you have a one type neutrophil or basophil, it's a, it's a single one but if you have a multiple because we have seen three lineage, right? Neutrophilic, eosinophilic, and meta, uh, I mean, basophilic myelocytes, and also the meta myelocytes, and also we have band. And among these, if all of them multiple cells are population, that will lead to multiple myeloma. What is that? Multiple myeloma. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Oma here, myeloma here, carcinoma like O M A is coming up in. That's been a cancer situation over there. Here it is the blood cancer. It's type of multiple myeloma. It is an abnormality in the lineage of blood cells. Don't think that okay, myeloma is in a muscle cancer. No, it is not like that. Someone right wrote that answer before, so. Uh, because M is there, M, okay, I can again write it down. No, that's not right. So, myeloma, if you say myeloma, is a, is a, we, we deal with the uh, myeloblast, the myeloblast from, coming from the blood, okay. Now, the fourth lineage from hemocytoblast is the monoblast. Is that right? Monoblast. Monoblast and it will produce pro monocyte pro monocyte pro monocyte will produce monocyte monocyte and the monocyte will produce macrophage macrophage the macrophage is the one which is a uh, so predominantly present in the blood, I mean mostly, and as well as in the tissue macrophage also there, which will help like a, in a, in a, you know, the tissue uh, abnormalities of, of any uh, infections or anything onto the cells, which is on the localized tissues is being abnormal. So the macrophage is in a rescue. This is something like, um, uh, the national defense and local police, there is uh, two different uh, categories, right? The military, which is going against, going fighting against. And sometimes, you know, you have to have the same type of training in a local sheriff's office. So these are present in the county local sheriffs, and, and they will take care of any, any defensive situation in a local. The macrophage helps to remove the, you know, pathogen in the locally. But the rest of the cells, you know, which we did with the uh, monos, uh, I mean, other uh, uh, white blood cells, that is roaming around in throughout the body, okay? So that is the uh, a different type of defense mechanism. But all of them put together, they fight against the infections. Okay, the fifth one on from the hemocytoblast is lymphoblast. Number five, lymphoblast. The lymphoblast will uh, again will give you, there are two categories over here. The lymphoblast will, uh, will produce, there are two. One working on bone marrow. This is from bone marrow. The another one working in thymus gland, thymus. In lymphoblast in thymus and lymphoblast in bone marrow, they will produce a yeah, yeah, different type of uh, cells that's enlarged lymphocytes from bone marrow. So, 
in large lymphocytes. Lymphocyte. And uh, thymus also will produce in a large lymphocyte. They also produce large lymphocyte. They both, I'm, I don't clearly, I, I didn't write, but it's a lymphocyte. The same thing, large lymphocyte is here. So there is a change when they produce individually in bone marrow and individually in the thymus. Um, and they can also exchange this one. Large lymphocyte can go through thymus and thymus derived large lymphocyte can also go through uh, into the bone marrow. So that is also possible. So the, the one, the bone marrow derived cells, okay, that's around the large lymphocyte. This, this is from bone marrow, right? It is a bone marrow. And that will eventually getting into the medium, into a medium lymphocyte, medium lymphocyte. And then medium lymphocytes that will give to uh, condense into the small lymphocytes, small lymphocytes. And small lymphocyte will produce B cell bone marrow derived cells, okay? And then the B cells uh, eventually will produce you, if you have a plasma cells, plasma cells will produce the antibody. So that is the, if you have antibody production in your system, in your body, so that is mainly from the plasma cells and the plasma cells coming from B cells and B cells is derived from when you go trace back on the lymphocyte, bone marrow, B for bone marrow. Here in this case, bone marrow derived cells, plasma cells. Another type of uh, uh, B cells can also produce a memory cell. So plasma cells, another one is the memory cells, memory cells. So this memory cells is the one which will uh, keep the memory of any uh, antigen so that if a future, if any type of infection of the same antigen, so it can fight back and produce of more of, of antibody, okay? So that's on memory cells, cells are derived from B cells, okay? Then the uh, one which I mentioned before, the thymus derived one, thymus derived large lymphocyte, and this large lymphocyte will give the medium lymphocyte, and medium lymphocyte is a small lymphocyte in the same way. And then it will give rise to this small lymphocyte from thymus will give T cells. The thymus derives T cell, T cells. And these T cells will again will produce a memory cells. Memory cells. Then the memory cell, another one, the T cell is the T helper cells. T helper cells and then uh, you have a uh, T killer cells. Another type of cells is the T killer cells. So this we extensively studied in immunology about the T killer cells and T helper cells and how they coordinate and then uh, they, uh, 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 they, they also you know function as a suppressor any uh, infection or anything. So we we have the T cells that predominantly will help to kill our cells to get a suppressor cells, okay. So up to this, we have finished all the lineage. The lineage, what we have done in summary, we know where the platelet is coming from, platelets, and we know erythrocyte, where erythrocyte is coming from, and also we know about the neutrophil. Also we did study about the eosinophil. And we did study about the basophil. And then uh, we did study about macrophage. What is the origin of macrophage? And then we did study about the B cells. And then we did study about the T cells, okay, antibody producing cells and plasma cells and T helper cells and all suppressor cells. So, so all put together are the blood cells, okay. So these are the lineage, blood lineage or blood cell lineage in this. 
Do you have any questions on this blood cell lineage? Any questions? Nope. No questions? Victoria? No questions. Okay. Sink orange? No questions. Okay. In uh, sugar line? No questions. So if you been asked the question of uh, the you write a short notes on the origin of neutrophil. So what do you write? Question to Victoria. Huh? Not immediate. I need the history, the lineage. You have to write the lineage. Don't write the, the immediate precursor for that particular cell. Don't write it. Only one. But that is, that's an answer, but that is not getting a valid one. I, I expect from the origin, you have to trace back to hemocytoblast. Okay? So you have to go back to hemocytoblast. So like that, uh, eosinophil, if I ask the lineage of the T helper cell, then you can the T helper cells, you the T cells, and T cells from thymus derived cells and large lymphocytes, and then it's, it's going over there. So if, yes, go ahead. Yeah, we. You, I mean, if you 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 have to write just like I mentioned to you, which will uh, with the immediate precursor, that immediate precursor to the what is the other pre precursors, and so that lineage I need it just for one. If I say if I ask you to write erythrocyte, what is the origin of erythrocytes? So you have to write not only one; you have to go the whole starting. You need to remember only few things. That's all. Yeah, it will tremendously help you when you go on a medical school or dental school or anywhere. Invariably, they will ask this some sort of questions from here, from hematology. This is a large field. So if there is a, 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 a large population of lymphoblast in your blood, that forms to lymphoma. Okay? It is coming again for the lymph node. The lymphoblast will again accumulate in the lymph nodes. You know the lymph node? So that is the swelling and the carcinoma of the lymph node. Again, this you know, you got is the lymphoma. And that is a significant... Uh, diagnostic feature is the lymphoblast. If you have a more number of lymphoblast in this, why you have more number? Because the origin for the lymphoblast, which is coming from the lymph nodes, as well as you know, uh, you you got the bone marrow as well as the thymus. So that is going to be modified. We don't know where the abnormality is lying, either in the thymus or it is in the bone marrow. In that case, they have to transplant the bone marrow. Have you ever heard of bone marrow transplantation for lymphoma patients? You know that? The origin, because you have to go on the root of that abnormal cell. So if you remove that bone marrow and then you transplant into another bone marrow, then that person can survive. I have got my one friend, I lost my one of my distant relatives, and then he's, uh, he was okay, but all of a sudden he got the uh, cells. But he was, a, I mean, when I was a graduate student, he was a professor. And then he knows, uh, at that time, I mean, uh, he, uh, he had that disease, but not, not elaborately. So he came to our bio, he was a history professor, and then he came to our biology, and then I, uh, he wanted to check his uh, white blood cells. I said, I, we are doing some experiments, and, and so he donated a white blood cell, and then we did study. Then uh, I could see some abnormality, but I couldn't figure it because I'm a, only a graduate student. I don't know what the heck is going on, you know, in his body. It is, it, it is not normal. Pure normal. Call my professor and he said, he said who is this patient? He said, he said, he said, who is the person? He said, who is the patient on that? Then he, he, I asked him to come and then he mentioned that uh, he got this lymphoma. In it. And then uh, after two years, then uh, he was on a drug therapy, chemotherapy, a terrible pain. And then third year, he got to trans, you know, trans, transplantation of the blood, uh, bone marrow. Uh, uh, immediately his brother is there, but his brother denied his bone marrow transplantation. And, but uh, eventually, you know, he passed away after maybe six months with a terrible incident. The, it happens in 1988, um, uh, like that period, 88, 89. 
then why I'm saying that from that day onwards to now, a lot of information is available right now for the cure for the lymphoma. If he would have survived now, he can be better health. You know, instead of the bone marrow transplantations and anything, there are alternative therapies available now. Also, there's a recent uh, uh, discovery on, on the um, uh, multiple myeloma and the patients, uh, as, as well as the lymphoma. It's a challenging, it's, it's very good therapies being available onto this one, okay. Next class, I will, I will uh, give you some of the uh, results on that. Um, have you ever uh, uh, studied about the, uh, do you believe in, in miracles somewhere? No. If you believe in miracle, and there's a one incident happened to in, a, in a three, four years back, uh, there's an accident which happened in, the, in a research lab. Uh, the researcher, he was uh, mismatching with some buffer and, and growth buffer for the blood cell, and all of a sudden the blood cell is being turned into the original cell. And then they saw, they thought it's an accident because it is not being done properly. And then finally they investigated, but it is some sort of a growth factor. If you add, you can revert the abnormal cells into the original cells. It happened in Israel and uh, the scientists from Britain, they invest, investigate about this and then they found and, and there is a, uh, a quite a bit of challenging for this. Then they got to believe in a, in a clinical trial. So eight-year-old boy suffering from the lymphoma, okay, and they put a challenge because he's going to die another three months. That's the critical situation. So get a clinical trial. Can we try a new type of what? We can take his blood. We will change that cancer cells, whatever the thing, and then back into the original one. And then we will re-inject his own cell to him. Let us see. So they, tr they tried. And that boy, an eight years old boy, now he's been grown up, uh, maybe uh, another 15 or 16 years old now, he's here, but he's alive after that, the treatment. It will take three to four hours. They couldn't believe it. So they started treating on this for very many patients on their own cells and there is no need to have a transplantation, that's what I'm saying. Then they said, uh, um, uh, or NIH from United States, they want to believe this story. So they invited the scientists to back in NIH in Bedside on Washington and then he, they asked you to demonstrate in front of our eye, do to do that. So that the NIH director in cardio, cardio cardiologist and heart specialist and then he said, I can, I can synthesize any type of cell you want, I can do it. What type of cell you want? He, he challenged me heart cells, heart muscle cell. That's our next topic here today. Okay. Heart muscle cell is, an, is, a, is something like um, uh, inherent quality of contraction and relaxation. It will, it will shrink and relax, okay, contract and relax continuously, unlike the other cells. If you, if you see the cells, normal cells, and the normal cells is going to be as such, it won't do anything. It will keep quiet, but it will, it will function, it's a live cell. But when you transfer that normal cells, into a, 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 a heart, cardiac muscle cell. Cardiac muscle cell, which is have an inherent quality, like I said, mentioned, is a contractability. It is an inherent quality of that particular cell. So it's a quite big challenging, and then, and then the scientist, whose blood is this? Then the scientist himself, he donated his own blood. Okay, here is my, my, my blood from, from NIH. Change into heart cell. Then he, she did, with a three, four hours of that, and then finally, the, his own eyes, you can see that one, that cells become changed into a cardiac muscle cell. A cardiac muscle cell, then we say under the microscope, you saw the exactly same, um, the characteristic of a cardiac cells, which is a uh, contractability and relaxability. Then he, he didn't speak any word. After that, he took the cell and gone into his lab. Okay, I will explain experiments and, and, and do that work. And it has been published in the New Scientist. And the people, they've been talking, talking, talking. And that's one of the things they said, you can program, reprogram this uh, cancer cell into the back into a stem cell, and then from the stem cell into the actual cell. So that is the, that is the sequence which he did. But this happened in accident, but now there are several companies is, is coming up, and they will, they will challenge now. Whichever the abnormality, you donate your blood, and you'll change it, whatever the cell you want, you can do it. 
that's one the adult stem cell story and uh, that's a part and it's a, it's a title i like it is a do you believe in miracle they put that boy's picture and the scientist pictures on it it's it's happening now so it's uh, uh, there are three or four companies now the patenting on this technology it has been available okay why i'm saying this don't get you know uh, only you are studying only the cells but the application of these cells is tremendous okay these companies and they are looking for biologists who can do this one uh, hematologists who can do this one this type of work okay and we have one uh, cafe scientific in 12th do you know about it and you can come the the peter, dr peter anderson is going to is a well leading uh, leukemia in children and then lymphoma and it's especially in the blood cancer type so you can come and ask questions you can very welcome on 12th right is that right 12th or is it 12th yes it's a six o'clock or seven o'clock seven o'clock coffee scientific if you ask question and get an answer and then you can post it into an email attachment like as coffee scientific question answer and you will get a bonus points five points for your for your for your exam okay at the final so you can ask question and then you have no now the knowledge which i have given to you okay what is lymphoblast what is lymphoma what is myeloma you can ask any clinical type of question because i am not a clinician you can ask question and he will able to answer that will give you a bonus point for you okay any questions sinkaranch also can join our victoria student if you want to come yes you can also come and join with us here but i will give you another opportunity for victoria students so that you can you can uh, uh, interact and then get and earn the bonus point this bonus point will will give you an upliftment for your grade you know from your b to a or c to b or you know what c to a or d to a anything like you know so please make sure you can come and attend and get your uh, you know grades you said you have to write a paper on the question you have to write what question you are asking and don't repeat the other people question you had asked your own question yeah. okay and then write the answer and then you submit to my email as an attachment and the title is the cafe scientific questions so in that way i can organize myself and then get the answers okay right okay so i'll give you another 5 minutes break now and then come back we will start with the muscle tissue Okay, we'll go on to the next um, lecture along with the, um, we have discussed about the, uh, <coughs> hematology before, okay, now we will go on to the muscles, so we will see different types of muscles today and uh, do you know about the muscle cells uh, there are different types of uh, the muscles as well as uh, I say muscles means um, you know you may remember in your skeletal muscle right you remember about the skeletal and then uh, what are smooth muscle cells smooth muscle and cardiac muscle correct cardiac muscle so individually you know it may vary in its structure the muscle structure i put in a drawing like uh, if you see the like a, like a bone which is coming off here so you have a tendons this is a bone and you have a tendons like this and then you have a as a muscle <coughs> going over there so the muscle will go like this, you know, if you have a, if an attachment to the bone, but this muscle, and, and always is a skeletal muscle has been attached to the uh, bone, right, skeletal muscle, okay. So if you, if you see indi individually, you know, just cut a piece of this fiber and then you can see, and it goes uh, with a, goes so it goes like this, okay. 
like a muscle fiber, it goes onto the fiber. So that's why you have a more on the lengthy, uh, you know, onto the morphological things. And then they have uh, a dark and uh, a light band, which is coming out. This is a dark band and a light band. And if you see closely, you also note a nucleus, which is also being there onto this. Okay. But this one, which is going to be a different shape and a different level. But the essential constituents of this muscle, you have a, you know, it's going onto the one fiber and bundle into the another fiber, another fiber, and, and collection of bundles into make a, a, a big uh, bundles like something like um, just if you have a cross sections you have like this the cross section of a muscle you get like this so individually I these are the bundles so individual cells but they are bundled together and then form the one uniform you know as a muscle if you if you if you see that uh, it goes like this you know you have. so so you have the um, one bundle here, another bundle, another bundle, another bundle, another bundle. But if you see inside the bundle, you get uh, uh, fibers. That fibers will go here and with the nucleus. So the um, the structure of the skeletal muscles will comprise of you have actin and myosin. They are the filaments and which will go alternative of dark and light band. Okay, actin um, and and myosin. We will see in our in our presentation today how they are equally arranged in a in a skeletal muscle as well as in the smooth muscle. It's a different story in the smooth muscle. The smooth muscle. Suppose if you imagine um, it is present in a in a blood vessels like this. Okay, blood vessel. And the blood vessel, which is going along with the, is a cross section of the blood vessels, which is I'm drawing. Here, these are the, uh, you know, you have a cells which is covering an endothelial cells. The green one, and it has its own nucleus, and and this is the lumen where the blood will flow. And uh, this one, which is uh, the the smooth muscles, cells with something like a, like a like a spindle shape, it goes like this, and there's a nucleus over there. And compared to the uh, actin myosin, which is present over there in the um, in a dark and, and, and light bands in skeletal muscle, but here the arrangement is that here also you find actin and myosin, but you won't find the band, no band, okay, no band, dark or light bands over here. How they cover? I'll just give you a little cartoon for that one here. Doing like this, this is your muscle, uh, smooth muscles. Uh, in a in a blood vessels, okay, so it goes like this, you know, so winding, 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 then it's going like this, you know, it goes. So if you see the the spindle like a shape of this cell with so the nucleus, the another cell will go like this. Then another cells will goes like this, another cells will goes like this, and then it goes again, you know, it goes. Uh, like a winding, 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 and thereby the smooth muscles will, will form in a, in a tubular fashion. Is in a tubular fashion. In a where you e exactly you can see the tubular fashion here, the blood vessels. Blood vessels that's made up of smooth muscles. Same thing. You have a uh, smooth muscle cells. Um, you know you find in 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 liver and uh, stomach. I think we have seen in, 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 in our histology lab, um, you know, on the slideshow, probably you will find out the other organs is made up of, of uh, the smooth muscles. So the cardiac muscles, uh, in the sense, you have um, the heart and uh, you have um, the muscles. These muscles, if you have a small, you know, the microscopic picture, you have a dark band and light band, as well as you have a separate, uh, uh, you know, one to the other, a branching which is going on here. So, see these are the dark and light bands in in intercalated disc, which is there. It's very thin intercalated disc. So they are the diagnostic feature 
of cardiac muscle cells when compared to skeletal muscles and also branches branches will, will help you okay. branches See, you won't find that many branches are no branch in, in skeletal muscles okay so now we will see in, in detail of how these um, so muscle cells have been organized as a tissue here. If you see the uh, PowerPoint will come up. The introduction, all muscle cells are specialized for contraction, possessing the ability to shorten and therefore create a contract. So the contractile force is the characteristic of the cells. Like uh, uh, intestinal cells will have absorption and nerve cells will have a conduction of uh, of the uh, message like electrical uh, signals have the same thing here in muscle cells is a contractibility which is a contraction relaxation and the main uh, protein which is synthesized by the muscle cell is the actin and myosin that helps the uh, move the products from one area to the other inside the cell and at the same time they also uh, give uh, a, a motility you know that the muscle is the one which uh, give uh, animals you know just a move from one area to the other you know to get the muscle movement also it provides the thermoregulation and maintenance of body temperature all because of the muscle muscle actions so in um, you know cold environment what you normally do if you want to keep for a while with the freezing to death is to do something like a active you just make yourself warm by running or jumping here and there and then make sure that you you become warm see that's a type of thing because uh, m m muscle cells they have uh, more mitochondria mitochondria will produce an ATP but when you do some other things are necessary it can convert it into m m heat energy that's on the body temperature thermoregulation okay uh, functions of muscles support movement propulsion black through blood vessels Movement of food or body secretion through tracts and thermoregulations. So these are, are the functions of muscle. If I ask a question, what are the functions of muscle as a short answer? You have to write all these four points. So if I give uh, a grade point for two points, if you write all four, you get two. If you get, if you write three, you will get one point five. If you write two, you will get one. If you don't write anything, you will get none. If you write one, at least you get 0.5. Okay, so that's one question for your exam. Functions of muscle. Okay. Now, characteristics of muscle. Another one. Muscle cells possess what? Besides the contractibility, respond to stimuli. Muscle cell automatically will respond. Okay. So if you touch your fire, what will happen? immediately you you contract so, so you have a nervous system we will see on the next class about it no receptors getting to the brain and are getting into the spinal cord and then immediately you can you can do it in a, in a different uh, in way like autonomous nervous system here you can call it the response to stimuli so the nervous system no cannot do anything no you pass on the message to the muscle and the muscle is the one which is doing the function which will contract ability so that's the thing it's a common in the nervous tissue uh, neuromuscular junctions so that's the uh, message in, in, in this particular uh, incident muscle cells are associated with elastic with the connective tissues too and then it, it contract and stretch so it it gives some elasticity the muscle cells when you contract and relaxation and then muscle types we have seen uh, before as the three types but here the muscle types vary in appearance histologically and as well as they have a long and narrow cells. The long and narrow cells is the smooth muscle cells, right? And um, also like a spindle fibers. And this fiber is commonly is a term for the muscle cells. Fiber, we uh, call it the muscle fiber. That's on the muscle cell, okay? And more fibers means more cells. So that's on the more specifically myofibers, we call it. Types of myofibers, skeletal myofibers or myocells are the skeletal cell or cardiac cell or smooth muscle cells or we call it myofibers. Classification, as I mentioned before, striation, that's our dark band, striation, non-type and, and, and doing that type with a 
with the highly organized arrangement. So that's very important, organization of the striation within the muscle. Smooth muscle has a contractible protein. They are arranged randomly here in the smooth muscle cell, but in the striation, which is an organized way. Okay. We'll see an example, striated muscle. Did you see that? Get this muscle, striations, right? As soon as you see, you remember what? A salmon, peeled salmon. You can see that kind of thing, right? Why? We get that type of uh, the muscle. It's not, I mean, it looks like a striation, but sometimes, you know, this is an impression of the bone, but that's a different issue. But when you see under the microscope, this one is the microscope picture. What I'm saying that is a macroscopically. But this one is a microscopic picture of a striated muscle type. And here you will see the nucleus too. Okay. Movement, muscle types also describes the voluntary or involuntary muscles. What is involuntary muscle here? Which muscle is involuntary? See, now you don't have a control over it. Cardio muscle. muscle. Okay. And any other muscles? Stomach. Stomach? Okay. Cardiac okay. and smooth muscles. Okay. Blood vessels. Yeah. Blood. Yeah. yeah. All the smooth muscles are mostly is getting on. Okay. Intuitively, you already know cardiac and smooth muscles involuntary types. Skeletal muscle types are called bones and controlled and voluntary type and three muscle types of you or them. Okay. Uh, when you do more of workout, that, that voluntary, you have to sign up for the gym and then pay money or without money you can go and do some exercise and, and then uh, you tone your body, that's, that's your will. But uh, they said when you do that, when you run and your cardiac muscle also is getting more of your getting out, workout, getting cardiac as well as, you know, you get the other uh, muscles, everything, all, all of them will, will go through you. So, to start with the, you can do a voluntary movement, voluntary muscle lead to strengthen the involuntary muscle, okay, one lead to the other, okay. That's why they control the environment. Skeletal, voluntary muscle attached to skeletal muscle on cartilage, cardiac, involuntary muscle, making a myocardium of the heart. Smooth, involuntary muscles, whilst hollow organs, uh, blood vessels and all other types. So, please make sure you understand properly because you may have some quizzes over here, skeletal cardiac and it, it is being changed and, and then you have to remember which one is which. Which is elementary school stuff but just I am repeating it, okay, you know very well. Autorhythmic, this autorhythmic type is the one which is I, I mentioned before as a cardiac muscle, possess this ability. I explained to that a little bit of them, do you believe in miracle, that is also there is an auto rhythmic types only they observe as a as a cell type identification. If you have a hundreds of cells put together in a pool, I give it to you and then you under if I view under the microscope which cell is which. You can easily identify the RBC, easily identify white blood cell, macrophage and everything for a nucleus. Everything is stationary. They don't do anything except they may contraction, maybe a phagocytotic activity. But if you have the rhythmic contraction and relaxation, if you find that is the cardiac so that's autorhythmic types. Okay, that's an connective tissue components of muscle. Is the we we find there are three types of um, the covering. You know, we call it as a connective tissue elements. The connective tissue will will form a covering sheath of muscle fiber. All muscles invested with connective tissue elements, delicate fibers, wrap around individual muscle endomycin. So each fiber delicate fibers wrap muscle cells, individual muscle cell endomycium. Then you find the another type, heavier connective tissue or more collagen surrounds the muscle fibers as perimycium, dividing each muscle to fascicles. Okay. And then dense irregular connective tissue, CT abbreviation is connective tissue, surrounding the entire muscle is the epimycium. So you have to know about what is endomycin, what is perimycin, what is epimycin, okay. The outer connective tissue covering and uh, anchor attachment, this epimycin, which is, uh, you know, to surrounding fascia, tendons and ligaments and, and then uh, aponeurosis, uh, broad, flat tendons. So these are some of the technical terms you should remember in a histology class, uh, endomycin, perimycin, epimycin. They are, what is this? Uh, these three myceums are nothing but connective tissue that you should understand. 
they are covering sheep, like a, like a wrapping around individual, uh, individual muscle fibers, and then collection of fibers, and then the whole bundle of fibers. Yes. That's right. Correct. Cigarettes. Cigarettes. The cartoon. Cartoon. That's nice. That is right. That is right. That's good. That's good analogy for you to observe. So one wrapping into the other one. Yes. Did you turn on your mic? I'm sorry. Did you turn on your mic? The mic in front of oh, you? No. Yeah, you just do it now. <laughs> so here, Lillian Garcia is talking about uh, epimysium, perimysium, uh, endomysium. Come on, go So ahead. I was, <coughs> it was explained to me once that to try to remember all the different wrappings, uh, the endomysium would be kind of like a cigarette, this, the wrapping of, you know, one individual cigarette. Then you have the perimysium, which is the next category, which it would be a box with, 12 or however many cigarettes are in, in one little package and then the whole um, what is it like the the big carton of collection, collection of uh, uh, boxes of cigarettes would be the epimysium uh, collecting all of the cigarettes within each box so the individual covering is made of connective tissue right like a like a cellulose paper inside they have all the tobacco and the different yeah <laughs> Right. Don't smoke much, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, without connective tissues, what happened? Forces generated by muscles during contraction would not be transferred to tissues which the functions are performed. So, these are the, the necessity of the connective tissues, okay. And keeping this point in mind uh, reminds us that all the slides, are, uh, I mean, all like containing muscle tissue will also possess connective tissue components, right? Watch for this and remember vascular element through the connective tissue deliver blood and, and then now take a look at some sections of muscles. So that's what you hear here we will see that one, connective tissue components. You can see that connective tissue components, smooth muscles cut in cross sections. Here the connective tissue is going over there. Something like if you go on the grocery store and getting a, a what? Some beef steak or something like that? They cut it all. The different, you have connective tissue and muscles and everything, right? Fascicles, you'll find it. Now here is a section of cardiac muscle where the fascicles are visible, but the connective tissue components are not, it's only the fascicle. And then uh, here, skeletal muscles again. Okay, myofibers. So think of fascicles as being a key feature to look in the identification muscle tissue, cross sections, longitudinal section fascicles, may not be obvious and other criteria, striations <laughs> important to identify the muscle. So individually you remember that um, the muscle uh, striations, that, that's one other criteria to identify our diagnostic feature. non striated muscle and then these are uh, non striated muscle lacks a visible striation it may not give an impression that non striated muscle they don't have actin myosin no they have actin myosin filaments that protein but the arrangements uh, it's not like uh, like visible they are randomly distributed okay and and then we'll go on to the next one myofilaments the elongate contractile filaments within myofibers that contain the proteins actin and myosin. So these are the uh, example of uh, the, the proteins, like uh, myofilament proteins. A and uh, it is interaction between actin and myosin filaments or myofilaments that ultimately brings about the contraction. So the contractability and, and, and also striations and whatever we are doing about the function of muscle, we are, we are talking about uh, about the actin and myosin function, how the actin protein and myosin protein. I have given a wonderful um, a cartoon we can also watch in you know one of these animations that will also help you to understand how the contraction and myosin and uh, which will help move as well as the you know uh, contractions uh, which is being effectively done 
if you don't have a calcium, if you don't have magnesium, if you have other ion, if you don't have any communication from, from the nerve ending to the, to the muscle, then you may not be able to move your muscles. So that is another, the paralytic uh, things on, because the actin, myosin, filaments, which the protein is there, but it, there is no function. The protein cannot contract unless other way it receives a signal from the neurons. So instead of getting the neurons, if you give some electrical impulse to it, and similar to that, and that can be done. That's one of the latest uh, discovery on, 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 on finding some of the, uh, you know, catalytic, uh, I don't know, is a catalytic battery or catalytic charger, which will activate the immovable arm and to the, you know, movable one, like a robotic arm, you know. So they are, they are doing some other work, and they always getting on the neuromuscular junction to activate the actin myosin so that you can use your own muscle instead of some. Uh, some other aid, prosthetics like. These myofilaments are arranged in muscles in two different ways, provide contractibility with the different capabilities. Okay, let's see here. Hollow organs in smooth muscle cells or blood vessel cells. Example, bladder or uterus or the pregnant female, they accommodate substantial stretch, so you have a contractibility. And the actin myosin filaments are arranged randomly in smooth muscle cells, so that's why you don't have the same overlapping material. Is Key points to remember, yes. Is that animation on the black? Yes, it is, it is there. Key points for smooth muscle cells here. You can see the one of these animation how the myofiber stretched, the myofiber relaxed, how you can you can see the the example, cell cut in the middle and cells cut in the tips, and then cell cut in the middle. You can see that one, how these cells, these are the cells. The one which is you can see that one here. Okay. And shape of smooth muscle cells, again, is elongate or cigar-shaped central nuclei which are visible within the cell. So I, as, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a spindle shape, smooth muscle cell. And the presence and watch these are the elongate nuclei arranged parallel to one another. That's what I mentioned before in my beginning of the talk, I mean, how the, they are wrapping around in a blood vessel cell, so the thin, <coughs> thin, um, you know, other muscles, cells. So we go on to the, look for these, and you to find the smooth muscle encircling the vessel lumen. This can be used as a convenient reference or comparison on another tissue block. Think in a smooth muscle, we, this one we'll see here. Smooth muscle in longitudinal cross section, you can see that. It's not like a skeletal muscle, but it's a predominantly like a, like a spindle fibers like thing here. You can see the nucleus is uh, it's going over here. It, it, it's different from from the cardiac as well as these striations. Dense regular connective tissues. That's a, you can, you can distinguish from the one to the other. Okay. <coughs> Smooth muscles in cross section. Now you can see the comparison. Okay. A blood vessel wall. You can see the muscles going over there and your lab also you have done. And here is the lumen and you find the cells of uh, Endo, what is that? Endothelial cells, not epithelial cells, endothelial cells over here. And then here the muscle cell. Okay, question. How, how and where you find the atherosclerosis, the condition? If there is any inflammation in the inside here, in the blood cells, are the, and that promotes with the accumulation of the blood cells, uh, especially of the neutrophils accumulations. And the smooth muscle cell should do some function. It will eliminate that accumulation by contractibility. But what happened, the smooth muscle cell will come out of that territory and into the lumen. And as soon as it comes out, what? It has a plenty of nutrition. Here, the nutrition to receive is much less when compared to here because here, this smooth muscle cell, if during the inflammation, if there is a hole or the breaking of this lining of endothelial cell, and smooth muscle cell can come outside and waiting here because there are a lot of nutrients, blood, blood flow, nutrients, oxygen, everything is there. So these cells will, will, will enjoy the feast which is happening there and it started multiplying 
more and more and more and more. And then that helps with the cholesterol and then white salts and everything put together precipitate a plaque, a obstruction for the blood salts. And that is the cause again atherosclerosis. Any part from the question is how I mean in this situation how do you get the atherosclerosis? Atherosclerosis. Yes. Block and the blood vessel. One of the theory is the smooth muscle cells, which will which will come. So when you culture the smooth muscle cell in vitro in a in a test tube in the lab, it will it will give you know a, a different types of uh, uh, of the lineology. You know when you can you can manipulate you can you can uh, make sure these cells can divide. If you supply enough growth factor and enough nutrients, it can grow. So. So if we keep inside the territory, keep quiet, it won't do much. But when as soon as there is an inflammation, it, there's a chance of getting out or this is going in, then the thickness of wall or blood wall will be more and thereby you will result in more of atherosclerosis. Okay. Next one, small blood vessels, here you can see the small blood vessels, thin small wall and smaller blood vessels here the here the vessel the, I'm the cross section and these are the small smooth muscle cells striated muscles as I mentioned before is a sarcomere are the myelofilaments who overlap the dark light bands and and then areas non overlap these are already we have seen a couple of uh, classes now we can see that one how the sarco fibers so some of the key points you have to remember if I give you this picture you have to narrate this one. So this is another question for your exam. What are the key points to remember about sarcomere? That is the question. So what are the points you have to remember? Sarcomere, repeat long. I, I can also give this picture to you for your exam, but, uh, but generally you have to remember what are the key points about sarcomere. Repeat along skeletal muscle cardiac fiber, how many Bullet points here, one, two, three, four, five. So at least I expect four for to get a two points here, okay? So there are bands, I bands, lighter areas, and on overlap between actin and myosin, you know, all those. So here you have the actin, and then and, and then here it is the uh, 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 myosin. One. This one, the light ones. And, You can see that myosin which is inside, which is coming over here, then actin is coming outside the myosin. So these are the alternative, these are the actin myosin, actin myosin is there, but they are arranging in a, in a way like I band and A band, I band, and then the line which we which you will see the Z line. So they are overlapping. When the contraction occur, it will come back, come back, it will come back, contraction, and, and then relaxed state, it will go away from each other. Striations are key attribute to identify skeletal muscle. This again, I'm repeating the same thing again and again. Please remember that. Differentiation, remember striation across cells indicate you are being cardiac skeletal muscle. Differentiation of those two types involves other surfaces. We will examine these now. So another way to identify the skin, skeletal muscles, skin cells, hypodermal layer, you can easily identify with the smooth muscle or, or the skeletal muscle. Myofibers, skeletal muscles are long, that's another diagnostic feature, okay. Here you can see that, skeletal muscle features, okay. In the cross section, you find this cross section of this spherical cells and multiple peripheral nuclei, you can have the nuclei, so you can see the bundles together like a cigar, as a Lillian Garcia put up that. You can look like a cigar, right? Adipose and skeletal muscles. See, so the skeletal muscles and adipose tissues together always, you know, go hand in hand in the sense um, for, for the use of these muscles, much of this, the adipose tissue will give you the um, the enough energy or unnecessary uh, material, unnecessary fatty acids being stored over there. So if you do much of workout, 
what will happen you are you are going to use these fatty acids which is coming out here and you can reduce your body weight as well as you can also increase the muscle mass so when you go into the workout and then the trainer always will say if you do continuously then only you can lose don't leave it and and then you know so if you do more you won't get reduce your weight immediately but you are going to use all of those adipose tissue to skeletal muscle then after that if you use this muscle and then and then you burn all your energy so that is the trick so to start with you won't get any reduced weight or you know taking the muscle now you have to develop individually what do you mean by that when you do exercise are you increasing your muscle mass no it is not exactly the muscle mass but muscle volume the cellular myofibril volume will increase and that will give you more of mitochondria in that you are more of a hypertrophy really that that's one other thing more of muscle mass and hypertrophy where you you get uh, uh, you are you are burning excess of the adipose tissue All, also diet that also going hand in hand with that one too cardiac muscle is only found in the heart nowhere else you find the cardiac muscle if you find cardiac muscle any other parts of the body then that is a problem you may have a two hearts or three hearts <laughs> okay other structural features are usually apparent and the identification striations are weak here more capillaries where you know in in a cardiac muscle so you have more capillaries where you need to have more of oxygen and glucose right longitudinal cross section use if you see this is the cross section of cardiac muscle feature see the branching look at the prominent and center a arranged nucleus unlike the uh, uh, skeletal muscle this nucleus is present over there you know somewhere but here it present at the center and you find the intercalated disc you know the junction cell this is one cardiac cell the another cell this is another cell also there is a branching of this but you find certain lining so that lining intercalated disc will help you to transmit the signals so that you will have a rhythmic contraction contractibility of heart cardiac muscle fiber that got the gap junctions and uh, you know the the gap junction is the one you know one cell into the another cell that intracellular gap junctions and that is where you find the the intercalated disc is being mainly prominently uh, transmitting the signals okay so these are the how the cells are arranged these are intercalated disc that's one other thing and a short answer questions i'll ask you about intercalated disc <coughs> don't write intercalated disc are present in skeletal muscle or smooth muscle that is wrong answer your correct answer is intercalated discs are present in cardiac muscles muscle fibers what is that that is done in intracellular membrane or gap junction they are present then abandoned right so you have to write three points if i ask you to write a short notes on intercalated disc first where do you find in cardiac muscle right and then what is its function it transmit the signals to the cells and 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 then exactly in 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 the place where the gap junctions are there you find the intercalated disc and the intercalated disc are the diagnostic feature of cardiac muscle so when you write all these four points you get a full grade for that question summary cardiac muscle consists of branching fiber types and single centrally placed nuclei <coughs> so these are the summary for the cardiac muscles sorry you want anything cardiac muscle in longitudinal section you can see the longitudinal section how the cardiac muscle and you will also find the capillaries are visible here you can see the capillaries this one coming over here these are the capillaries <coughs> and then the enlarged view of cardiac muscle with the striations so this is enlarged view again see this is striation of octin and myosin we are showing a central nucleus again cardiac muscle cross section uh, how the cardiac muscle looks like this is another cross section another view for nucleus space intercalated disc but here you can intercalated disc you can see this this one and then here intercalated disc you will also find some other feature in your in your lab you will find some of them but it's a bit difficult but but eventually you can get it so 
So let me see the actin myosin. What happened? It's not, it's gone. It's going back now. Get one of these animation. It's getting slower. I don't know why is that. Okay, now let me see now. It's one of the real audio, I think, that's coming up. At the start of the contraction. Stored calcium ions are released into the cytoplasm. Calcium ions expose binding sites on the actin molecules. Globular heads on the myosin can bind to these sites, forming cross bridges. Repeated binding and release moves the filaments relative to one another, and as this occurs simultaneously in many sarcomeres, the entire muscle shortens or contracts. This process requires energy in the form of ATP. Okay, so that's another one you can watch. Striated or skeletal muscle is attached to bone and makes movement possible. A muscle's structural pattern is a series of increasingly smaller parallel units. The muscle is composed of fascicles. Each fascicle consists of several fibers. Each fiber is an elongated cell with many nuclei. Within each fiber are myofibrils composed of thick and thin filaments made of protein. The regular arrangement of these filaments gives striated muscle its striped appearance. The basic functional unit of a muscle is the sarcomere, a section of a myofibril. One is shown here, bordered by the crooked blue lines. A sarcomere is composed of thick filaments of myosin, in red, and thin filaments of actin, in blue. Muscle contraction is the result of these thick and thin filaments sliding past one another. Yes, now it's been done. You can walk home. <laughs> okay. So, I'll see you next week.